Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you uh, a few techniques and tricks and tips uh, that will help you create a sense of mood, um, emotion uh, in, your, uh, in your photographs um, purely by playing with uh, the, the lighting. So obviously this is going to be a uh, tabletop setup um, but Everything that I'll tell you today, you can apply to any type of lighting, whether it's um, flash or continuous or uh, sunshine, uh, anything. The laws of physics are exactly the same um, for all different types of light. So you should be able to apply everything I tell you now to just about every uh, other genre of photography um, besides uh, tabletop stuff. But for this demonstration, what I'm going to do is show you how to take some um, moody pictures of uh, an egg. So for that we will need an egg, just happen to have one here. So just a normal common garden egg, uh, nothing special about that. Um, it's worth having a good look at the egg before you start placing it uh, because these days there are various um, lion marks and so on on them. Um, so it's a good idea to put the align marks away from the camera. You don't really want those on the camera. Uh, and the first problem that you would find is that if you're trying to place your egg, uh, it will just roll over. It won't stand up on its own. So what I've done is uh, made myself uh, a little uh, ski ramp here uh, out of uh, blue tack. Uh, which I can use to support the egg. So just looking at this egg, I think this probably wants to go on this side of it, a bit like that. So we'll just pop that on there. And then hopefully it should stay virtually upright. Right. It's a good idea to try and get this as based onto the surface that you're using as possible because it will make any retouching that you might need to do uh, a bit easier. I'm just going to check that in the camera just to see just what that looks like. Okay. Right. So now we have our egg uh, on, um, on our surface. Uh, by the way, this surface that I'm using uh, is uh, just a sheet of um, matte perspex, uh, but you can use anything. Um, this is quite handy to use, it's probably a bit big for this application, uh, but you can use uh, anything you like. Uh, bear in mind what sort of mood uh, or what sort of emotion you want to invoke with your picture. Right, um, so I have a camera I usually use here uh, with again a 20 to uh, 70 mil uh, zoom lens on it uh, and I've tethered that so that you can see the uh, the images as they appear uh, on this computer. So I'll just get all that working. As usual I'm using uh, Capture One software. So I'll just bring up that and turn on the camera. There we go, and uh, the software has recognized uh, the camera, you can see the name of the camera in here, uh, and it's giving me all the, uh, the quantities in here, so I've got uh, the shutter speed at uh, 1 500th of a second, um, I'll need to change that. Uh, so I'm going to change that to the sync speed for this camera, which is uh, 1 250th of a second, um, ISO of 100, uh, f8, um, so we'll leave all that as it is for the time being uh, and um, just have a, a bit of a go, see if we can focus this up and uh, see what we get. So I'll do this uh, to start with uh, purely manually through the, the viewfinder here. And I think what I need to do is um, just zoom that out a bit. So I'm at the 70 mil end now. And I think the focus is somewhere around there. Right. 
So as we've said on previous occasions, it's always a good idea when you're doing this sort of thing uh, to make sure that the ambient lighting that you have uh, in, the, uh, in the area at the time doesn't make uh, any effect on the pictures that you take. Uh, so if I just take a, a, a test with no flash, uh, we'll see what we get. And I think you can just about make out on the, uh, on the image here that we do have uh, an image of an egg. Um, it's very faint, but it is going to affect things. So I'm just going to wind this up by a stop, um, uh, a couple of stops in fact, I think. I'll try 16. This is always a bit hit and miss. Um, I don't believe in using exposure meters for digital cameras. Wonderful in the day of film, of course, and we used to use Polaroid and all sorts of other things as well then. Um, but with digital, it's just as easy uh, to take another test, uh, and you can see from that it's uh, perfectly black. So we have uh, f16 set on the lens. Um, we'll set up a light and just see what we can get. So I'm going to use uh, one of these flash units. This is a uh, Profoto uh, B1X, uh, which is uh, a monoblock, uh, battery powered. It uses a lithium ion battery. It's about uh, 500 joules. Uh, so middle of the range as far as uh, power is concerned and to be honest for this sort of thing um, perfectly adequate uh, you wouldn't need much more power than this uh, for a normal size studio anyway okay so to start with what I'm going to do is just position this uh, so that we can uh, get an idea uh, of what a, uh, a picture might look like so I'm just going to pop this in here, possibly a little closer with something like that. There we go. Uh, I'll turn this on. There we go. Right. So in order to make that work, I'll just need uh, a flash trigger. Uh, this is the same as uh, I've used previously. Uh, it allows me to control the, uh, the flash remotely. Um, so I can uh, assign a, a channel to each one of the, uh, the heads we're going to use. We'll probably end up using three lights today, something like that. Um, and uh, each one of those channels is then uh, configurable from the top of the camera using this, uh, this interface. So I'll just pop this on here. Lock that on. Uh, we'll just give that a test. There we go. Right. Uh, so, no idea um, about the uh, exposure at the moment. Um, I would guess it's going to be virtually ballpark. We'll just give it a, uh, a test and see what happens. Yes, uh, a, little, uh, a little blown out, I feel. Um, so, I can take that down. Um, this is on power level uh, 7.5, uh, energy level 7.5, so I will take that down uh, by maybe three and a half stops to four. And give that another go. And there, we're getting uh, virtually on, uh, on par, I think. That's a, a pretty, good, uh, pretty good guess to start us with. Let me just check the focus. Easiest way to do that is just to uh, zoom in in the software here. Let's pan that around a little. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, I think it's getting a little soft on the edges. So I might just increase the, the aperture to uh, 22, just to give me a bit more depth of field. So we'll take that up to 22. So obviously that's uh, a stop. So I need to take this up a power level, energy level. So I'll take that up to energy level 5. Uh, and that should then compensate. 
There we go. Yes, I think that's a bit sharper down the bottom there. And definitely sharper at the top. OK, so, so far we've uh, set an exposure uh, and we've got a picture of an egg. But not particularly moody, uh, not particularly uh, anything other than a record shot of an egg, really. So there's a few things about this that um, I'd like to draw your attention to, and one in particular is the shadow which is being formed by this, uh, this, this flash gun. Uh, you can see that uh, the flash gun is relatively close to the, uh, the subject here, uh, and yet the shadow on the image here isn't that well defined. And the reason for that is because this is actually quite close. Uh, there isn't a great deal of uh, space between the, uh, the egg and the end of the, uh, the flash gun. But the diameter of this flash gun uh, is very nearly uh, 100 millimeters. Therefore, at this distance, this is acting like a bit of a softbox. Um, believe it or not. So if I move this back, so if I just move it back to here somewhere, and take that up in the air a bit, like that. Uh, I'll just turn the modelling light on just for a second, just to check it's actually going in the right place, which I think it is. Go. Let's have a look from the subject's point of view. Yeah, that looks all right. Turn the modeling light out. Now, obviously, um, I've moved this uh, quite some distance away, so the exposure will be different. Um, so it will need to uh, increase the, uh, the energy level. Um, so to start with, I think I'll just take a, a test image. OK. Uh, and from that, I can see that I probably need at least three stops, I would think. Uh, that is on channel A. So I'll take that energy up by three stops. There we go. And we'll do another test. OK, well, we're getting there. That is reasonable. If I compare it to um, the other picture, yeah, not too bad. OK, so what you should be able to see in this image uh, is that the, the shadow here is much more defined uh, than it was in the previous image. If I just flick between them again. That's because from um, this distance, this is acting like a, um, a, a spot uh, light source, a point light source. Uh, and because of that, you're getting a, a, a well-defined shadow. Having said all that and done all that, um, for this particular mood that we're trying to create here, I don't actually want a hard shadow, uh, but it's worth bearing that uh, piece of information in, in mind that I've just shown you there, because um, when you come to uh, try and control the, uh, the shadows that your lighting creates, uh, it is worth uh, bearing in mind the distance between the image, uh, the subject and the, uh, the flash gun, uh, or the light source, makes a huge difference to the way that um, that light source will wrap around, if you like, the, uh, uh, the subject. OK, so what I'm actually going to do is try and go for a very soft um, mood here. Uh, I'm trying to, to get something which is uh, a little edgy, if you like. So what I'm going to do is uh, side light this fairly severely uh, using uh, this flash uh, and a softbox. 
So let me just go and get a soft box. Here we go. So considering the size of our subject, uh, this is quite a large softbox relative to the size of the subject. So using this softbox around here somewhere should give me um, quite a, uh, a soft, uh, nice light, uh, the sort of thing that I'm uh, looking for. So I'll just attach this to here. Okay. Right, so we can adjust that. Pop that in there. Maybe drop it down a tad. And we'll give this uh, a bit of a test. Again, no light meter. Um, you don't need a light meter. We've got a fully calibrated monitor here. Okay, so that has given us uh, quite a reasonable light uh, straight out of uh, straight out the the stops, as it were. Uh, that looks quite nice, actually. Uh, I think for the uh, for the sake of just showing you what uh, the differences are, I might just wind the energy up and down um, just to show what we're looking for here. So if I just take that up by a stop and we'll just do another test yes now this highlight is in my mind a little too high uh, a little too bright uh, but the rest of it is reasonably okay but I'd like it a bit more moody so I'm going to take it down uh, and I'm going to take it down to where it was and also possibly another couple of tenths of a stop after that. Let's just take this down and see what that's like. There we go. I think that's more the sort of thing that I want to achieve. That's what I'm looking for here. Okay, uh, one thing that I will do at this point uh, is just have a bit of a check for colour balance. Uh, since I'm using a, a white uh, background here, I can use part of the software here to help me, and I'll just use that to set a white point. Obviously, uh, this is all being uh, this is all going down as a raw file. Therefore, the uh, the color temperature can be changed at will at any point in the future. Uh, this is purely to uh, see the image on the screen. Uh, to give you a good approximation of what you're going to end up with. So I've set that white point, so that's fine. So I think that is uh, actually uh, getting there. But again, uh, I'd just like to demonstrate something else. Like I said with the previous example, uh, the distance that your light source is away from the subject makes a huge difference to the way the shadows are formed. If you look at this image, these shadows are very soft, quite nice, because the, uh, the light source itself is close to the subject. But even with a softbox of this size, if I move this away, it will start to approximate to a point light source again and therefore you will lose um, that shadow detail. What you'll get in effect is uh, a point light source, so you'll get a very hard shadow. So if I just put this quite a distance away, this is why if you're going to use a softbox some distance away from your subject, you're going to need a big softbox to make anything work properly. OK, so I'll just do that as a test. Uh, so that's obviously been moved away. Uh, inverse square law, I will need to increase the, uh, the energy. So I'll take that up by two or three stops. Uh, 
There we go. Give that another test. Okay. So if I flip between these two, you should be able to see the difference in the shadow down here. Uh, even though that's a big softbox, we've now got a highlight on the egg uh, and you've got a, a defined shadow. Whereas before, when it was in close, you had quite a soft shadow uh, and a very nice graduation uh, on the egg. So we'll put the softbox back in the, what I think is the correct position. So we're going to get it relatively close to the egg. Should be able to see that there. Uh, I can't remember what the exposure was, but we can soon find out. We'll just go back and uh, do another test. Yeah, so that's a bit overcooked. With these, you can adjust them on the back of the units and on the uh, remote on the top of the camera. So it depends just which one you're closest to at the time, really. OK, that's possibly a little too moody, but we'll see how we go. Uh, yeah, I think about half a stop more on that. And fire another test. There we go. That's giving me more or less what I want. That's fine as it goes. Uh, nice image of, uh, of an egg, uh, but still no mood really. We need to create a bit of mood. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is try and uh, create a bit of a backlight, uh, a bit of a highlight just on this side here. So it separates it from the background. Uh, and in order to do that, I'm going to use uh, another flash. OK, so over here, I have a rectangle uh, softbox. And I'm just going to whoops, get around here somewhere. Here we are. Just place this in just about here somewhere. just to separate the, uh, the egg from the background on this side. I'll turn this one on. This is the same type as the other one on a different channel so I can control it separately. So just for now, I'm going to turn this one off. Uh, so that is number A. So we'll turn A off. So I'll just be uh, firing that one. I'll just give it a test. OK. And we'll just have a test. Right. Now that's given me just about exactly what I want. Can you see the highlight just on the edge of the egg? Which will separate it nicely from the background. So I'll just turn this unit back on again. Just test those, make sure they're both working, which they are. The test fire. There we go. So now we have uh, a nice graduation on this side too, just enough to separate it from the, uh, the background. I've no idea what the energy level was uh, on that lamp. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's about right where it is. So the next thing that I, I want to address, uh, I don't know whether you can see on your monitors at home, uh, there are a couple of highlights in the background here. Uh, they are almost certainly caused by a flare from this, um, so I will need to flag the, uh, the lens a bit uh, at some point fairly soon. But before I do that, uh, I'd just like to uh, add a bit of uh, mood lighting. Instead of having just the sheet which is uh, forming the, the studio wall, so instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is uh, put a background in here uh, so that we can project another light onto it. So I'm just going to place this out here somewhere. The idea of this is that um, this is just a, a 
sheet of uh, grey um, mount board. It's the sort of thing that you would um, cut your uh, photograph mounts out of um, before putting them into a competition, for instance, or putting them into a frame. Uh, but it's very handy because it's a, a very nice even colour uh, and it's stiff, which means that you don't get any uh, wrinkles or creases in it. Uh, and it's ideal for doing this type of photographic work with. So I'll just have a little look through the camera just to see if that is vaguely in the right place. And if it is, we'll do a test. Okay, that looks about right. Just fire one off. Yeah, that looks okay. Uh, we still have those highlights because I forgot to do the, uh, the flagging bit. I just use, again, this is just mount board. Um, it is the, uh, literally the cutout from the center of a mount. Uh, so I'm just going to use this uh, to flag part of the light away from the lens. So if I just hold that in there. There we go, that's got rid of it. That's much better. Right. So on to light number three. Um, so for that, I'm just going to use uh, another Profoto light. Uh, this is one of the uh, other battery models. Uh, this is a, a B2, uh, 250 joule. Um, so with this, uh, you can actually plug two of these heads into it. Uh, so I've just got one in at the moment, uh, and I'm just going to use this to um, throw some light onto the, uh, onto the background board that we've just put in there. Now it can be a little tricky uh, to get this lined up in the right place, because the idea is that the egg itself because it's much closer to the camera, uh, is going to hide the flash head. Because I don't want to put it, I don't want to put the flash head uh, too low, because if it's low, if it's below this surface, then it will be pointing up. Uh, and if there are any uh, deflections in this card, uh, that will pick that out. So the, the, the light needs to be perpendicular to it, really. So it will take a little while just to set it up, but we'll give it a go. Just turn that on. So the first thing I'll do is just have a look through the camera just to see if I can actually see that light at all. And yes, I can. I think it's just oh, it's a slightly over to one side. Let me just move that just a little bit, like that. Uh, now we'll just try a, uh, a flash. For this test, I'm going to turn off uh, the other two heads. OK. So there we go. Uh, you can see uh, the sort of effect that we've got on there. Uh, so we've got a bit of a halo around uh, this egg. Uh, not particularly even at the moment, but getting there. Uh, possibly needs to go up in power a little. The other thing that I wanted to do with that specifically, in, again, on this theme of giving it a mood, giving uh, some emotion into the, uh, into the thing, um, I'm going to colour it. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to use... Um, a small piece of, uh, of coloured gel, uh, which I think you can probably make out on here. In fact, if I get a full sheet of that, I can show you what it looks like. So this is available from um, theatre supplies, uh, goes into theatre lights, uh, and it is literally a coloured gel sheet. Uh, and you can just cut it up with a pair of scissors uh, and make it into whatever shape or size uh, you want. Very, very handy. Uh, again, very, uh, very inexpensive. Uh, this sheet is probably um, 50p. It's less than a pound a sheet, I know that. Okay, 
So if anyone wants to know where to get things like that from, um, just uh, put it in the comments below uh, and I'll answer those and um, let you know exactly where you can get it from. Okay, so I'm going to add this uh, to that light. So that just fits onto the front of the light. So now if I do a test, my glow should be blue. Uh, it'll also be a lot darker. Yes, there we go. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, I might do a test with all the other lights on, just to see what that looks like. So if I just turn on the other two lights, and now all three will fire this time. There we go. So we are starting to get there. Uh, you can see we have the glow around the, uh, around the egg. We've got a nice separation on this side. Uh, Well-defined uh, shadow. All looking quite good. Just need to do that flagging again. Keep forgetting that. So just to get rid of the highlight there. There we go. There we go. So I don't know whether you could see the highlight. There we are. If I turn those on, if I just go between these two, you should be able to see the highlight up here. There we go. So that's not bad, but still not that moody. I mean, it's more moody than uh, it was when we first started. If we go back to one of the previous, uh, one of the first ones that we started with, Back up here somewhere. We've gone from uh, that sort of image to that sort of image. Right, so the next thing that I'm going to do uh, is all to do with the background, the bit that is going down here, the bit that will be um, behind the egg. And I'm going to try and make this uh, into a very moody, smoky uh, atmosphere. So in order to do that, what I'm actually going to do is take this colour filter off the light. And I'm going to turn the light round and point it at the egg. I just have to do a bit of a test to start with. Move that out of the way. Just to make sure that I've got it in the right place. There we go. You can't actually see very much of the light, which is what I want. And I'll leave the others as they are for the time being. So what I'm going to do to make a bit more atmosphere is I'm going to add some smoke. This is a fairly standard um, theatrical type smoke machine. Um, all electric, uh, there is no flame as such, uh, so the saying about uh, there's no smoke without fire uh, isn't really very true because this will produce smoke uh, by um, heating uh, an oil derivative. So we'll pop this in position. I'm just going to put it here so that it's pointing vaguely at the flash unit. Like that, and we'll just, um, oh yes, we need to turn that on. So once this is all um, plugged in and uh, raring to go, uh, these units do take a while to warm up, uh, but this one's uh, pretty warm already. So then we'll just see what we can uh, produce. Okay, so press some smoke. Got some going there. Need a bit more, I think. I might just change the direction it's going in. But this is looking fairly hopeful. Looking pretty good. This time I'm going to turn it round so it's pointing more at the egg. It will go absolutely everywhere. Okay. Hmm. 
Uh, possibly a little too much. There we go. That's starting to get there. Oh, I do quite like that. Uh, what's happened there is that um, the uh, one of the flashes hasn't fired. Let's just give that a go. There we go. So what I will do is I'm just going to turn this one off for a second. There we go. Very sort of um, close encounters type lighting going on. It's looking quite good. Getting very smelly in here. This actually has a scent in it, um, which uh, is allegedly uh, strawberry, but I'll take my word for it, it isn't. So I'll just give that another go. I'm just waiting for the smoke to move around slightly. Uh, I might turn this light back on again now. But I will turn it down by about a stop. There we go. Very good. So if we just review those, just run through them. So this was the, uh, the first image um, with uh, the light, um, which was uh, undefined shadow, really. So then we've put the uh, softbox on. Then we've put the uh, highlight on the other side of the egg. Then we've added this blue glow in the background. And then we start messing about with some of the smoke. And some of these, I think, are, uh, are quite good. Uh, I think a composite might work um, between um, the, this type of thing and possibly one of these, just so that it gives us a bit more um, control over how we can manage them both together. So in order to do that, uh, I will take these now and put them into uh, Photoshop. And here they all are in Photoshop. OK. So if we pick one as a background, uh, I'll just do this as a... Uh, as an example, say for instance we go for this one, so what I will do is just duplicate the layer, like that, and now use one of the previous eggs, like that. Select all, edit, copy. I know there are faster ways to do that, but I do like to do things the, uh, the long way because it shows you exactly what I'm doing. Edit, paste. Uh, and what that has done is pasted me another layer over the top of the original one. Um, so just having a quick look through the variants that you can have, for instance using lighten uh, or screen is quite a, a good variant I think. So if I leave that like that and then turn that on and off you can see the difference that we're making. Okay uh, and obviously with this you can play with this quite, uh, quite, uh, quite a lot. Uh, so if, for instance, we light uh, one of the others, um, say it was this one, select, deselect. Uh, and again, I'll just duplicate the layer. I, I always duplicate the base layer um, 
because it's a good insurance policy, if nothing else. If you then want to go back, you can always get rid of your copy and you haven't done anything to the original. Um, so using this as our moody egg and perhaps then putting some of the other smoke. Yeah, possibly that one. So I'll select all, edit, copy. Uh, and go back to our other moody egg. Uh, edit, paste. And this time, whoops. Put uh, something like screen on there, that's pretty good. And because this is a completely different layer, um, if you wanted to, you could uh, add a layer mask to that uh, and then either paint it in or paint it out. Um, so if we just go for a brush uh, and use something a bit bigger than that. Oops, possibly not that big. Then what I can do is just paint out the sides there. There we go. Put it on the thirds, why not? And there we have a reasonable um, moody egg. Okay, so I hope that was uh, some use. Uh, and uh, I hope you'll be able to uh, have a go at that sort of thing uh, in, your own, uh, in your own environment. Um, I've used studio lights. You can do this with uh, normal flash guns. Um, I have, none of them are on a particularly higher high energy. Um, so you don't need a great deal of, uh, of energy to be able to do this. You don't need a lot of power coming out of the flash gun. Um, if you don't have a uh, smoke machine, uh, they can be hired for um, a few pounds a day uh, from various theatrical uh, outlets. Again, if you want to know where to get that type of thing from, um, just drop it in the comments below and I can tell you all about that. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for uh, paying attention through there, uh, and um, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.